To prepare for the aerial action scene, the show's director, Kari Skoglin, studied action groups on the internet who perform stunts in the air and jump on planes while recording themselves with a GoPro. Kari wanted to emulate the GoPro feel and have us, as the audience, feel that we're on board with Falcon and are encapsulated in an immersive experience. While Kari said it was hard to get everyone into squirrel suits, the sequence certainly paid off. But as we also said, this wasn't the only high stakes big action sequence to appear in the show. Falcon stunt coordinator Dave McCumber has posted images, footage and details on a number of the stunts they did on set, including the freeway action sequence that takes place on top of various moving trucks. The actual truck top where the actors performed was only a few feet off the ground, so if the actors fell, they wouldn't be badly injured, while stunt performers were brought in to perform the shots that were a little higher up. Like most productions, the main unit would shoot the actors and their performances, while the second unit would shoot the stunts and choreography for the action sequences. But just because stunt doubles were used, that doesn't mean that the actors did not perform a number of stunts themselves, and Aaron Kellyman, who plays Carly Morgenthau, said that she struggled to know which shots were actually her and which ones were her stunt double. In fact, the stunt team actually heralded Emily Van Camp, Anthony Mackie, and Sebastian Stan for doing their own stunts and said that they were natural physical performers. For example, Emily Van Camp, despite having a stunt double, trained for months to get in the right shape and have the choreography nailed and would often perform her scenes in one long, continuous take. Although, as you can expect, it did take a toll on her body with her ending the day with bloody knuckles and admitting that she really put herself through the ringer. But she also said that it was worth the pain, and it's hard to argue with her there. When the actors were really doing their own stunts, the production crew would make sure to show them off to make sure you knew it was them really doing it. Only when it was too dangerous or tricky would they be switched out. This really helped with the style of the show. Like John Wick, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier team wanted the action to be as realistic and down to earth as possible, and despite the show being about super soldiers, they wanted the fights to be scrappy and weighted. By having the actors perform it themselves and having these long takes, they were able to fulfill their vision. Stunt coordinator Brad Martin said, There's some big fight scenes where we trained the actors for months to learn how to look like they're actually kicking ass. He also said that he would develop a bond and level of trust with the actors, and would often talk to Sebastian Stan after shooting to discuss how it looked and how things were done. Cinematographer PJ Dillon said that his favorite sequence to film was the opening to episode 5, which apparently took 6 to 7 days to shoot in entirety. As we've said multiple times in this video already, the Falcon team really wanted to make the show look as much like a movie as possible and recreate that big cinematic feel. So to do this, they decided to shoot the show in the same way they'd film the movies, shooting in widescreen and on anamorphic lenses and using a bright color palette. One of the biggest elements of the show was to bring Madripoor to life for the first time in the MCU. Marvel gave the production guidelines and an approved visual for what they wanted for Madripoor, but overall, the team created what they wanted to create without necessarily leaving a footprint for any future Marvel projects that could take place in Madripoor. They always planned on having it nighttime and dark, contrasted with big LED lights and screens. While they said there wasn't any physical location that inspired them, comparisons to Singapore and Hong Kong can be seen, as well as the fictional Los Angeles and Blade Runner, which the production state that they did not use as a reference, but admit there are certainly comparisons between the two locations. The setting also had to match the tone, which could shift at the drop of a hat. While Marvel wanted to recreate the classic buddy cop movies, where you never know whether the partners love or hate each other, they wanted to mix the tones of these movies and be able to shift away from the grittiness of a movie like 48 Hours to the more comedic slapstick elements of movies such as Rush Hour whenever they pleased. And of course, it wouldn't be a buddy cop movie without two protagonists going up against each other. And Mackie and Stan's chemistry was vital for the show to work well, but we'll discuss their relationship a little bit later on. Despite it being about the two superheroes though, Sebastian Stan was more than happy to have Anthony Mackie's Sam take the limelight, as the character had yet to have a full backstory. The production also wanted to make Sam a more sympathetic character, and not one who would just jump at the chance to become Captain America. 
But of course, it wouldn't be a Marvel production without uncomfortable superhero suits. Wyatt Russell had actually auditioned for the role of Cap when Marvel were looking to cast Steve Rogers, but he finally got his chance to hold the shield and wear the cowl in the Disney Plus show. But he admitted that wearing the cowl wasn't exactly a pleasant experience and he found it very difficult to act in, but he added it into his performance, making John Walker inherently uncomfortable wearing Cap's costume. Sebastian Stan, on the other hand, had a slightly more comfortable experience on the costume front, doing away with the goggles and bandana, and even having a more comfortable and easier to wear arm. However, he did still find himself catering his performance to the bigger, clunkier, shinier arm that he used to wear. Speaking of Sebastian Stan, when speaking about his co-star Anthony Mackie on Jimmy Fallon, he said working with him was like riding a psychedelic horse into a blazing stable, and that's due to the actor's manic energy. Mackie had some just as hysterical words to say about Stan, saying in an interview with BBC Radio 1 that Stan was the most boring man he's ever met, and says he genuinely believed he just sits in his living room and talks to his plant. Mackie even admitted that he would wait outside Stan's room so he could stalk him to see where he goes, saying that he was interested to see where the introverted hermit went. Those were his words, not mine. Mackie even said that while filming in Prague, Stan went to a restaurant to celebrate Bucky's 107th birthday, but instead of inviting the cast and crew, celebrated by himself, with him even receiving a birthday cake for the occasion. I'm sure he would have invited Steve to join if he could have. Mackie has acknowledged that the two of them have fun and have a good rapport and bring that to the characters. This can be seen in their hilarious skydiving video posted on social by Sebastian Stan, where the two jump out of a very high plane with Mackie yelling out YOLO. YOLO! When asked who breaks character and cracks up the most, Anthony Mackie said it was a 50-50 split between the two, but he did bring up one moment that made him laugh, was when Stan had to use KY jelly to get his Winter Soldier arm on and ended up having it go all over his face. Another example of the banter between them was the staring competition scene, where Mackie said the two just went at it for 10 minutes before the editing team cut it down. In terms of visual bloopers, Mackie, who has been comedic blooper gold for years now, said that there was enough bloopers to fill out a whole episode, and said that every cast member produced such comedic gold that if they were doing a comedy like Guardians of the Galaxy, it would have made the final cut. Move over, Zemo dancing cut. I have a new cut I want to see. Although we are yet to see a full blooper reel, I am fully expecting to see Cut the Check on there.